Good afternoon, good friends. Uh, this is Richard Welfare Ministry, Matthew 4, uh, 13, 45, 46. Uh, we are going to share today a small, small extract, extract from the, the, the preaching that is uh, titled uh, Self Deliverance, a Reason of the Bible, Part 2, by Pastor Blair. Like Shubak, I think he is from the Ministry Hungry Generation in located in the United States. So our ministry, uh, Matthew 14, 45, 46, is located in South America, South America, and Central America. But we usually take some uh, extracts from uh, other. Um, messages from other pastors and leaders that uh, we consider are relevant for uh, sharing and for helping our local neighbors to cope with their own uh, spiritual situations. There are plenty of human conditions that seem unavoidable. For example, your education, your relation with your parents, your relation with people that you do uh, with, for example, it seems that when you are old that you cannot avoid what uh, you were uh, taught at your, ho at your own house or that you were taught uh, or uh, invited to share with at, uh, at the school. But you can avoid uh, those conditions in your time. Conditions, these conditions are probably too compromised uh, between, between your way to solve problems. That means that uh, you are using these conditions learn conditions to solve the, your everyday problems. And taking away those conditions implies that you will have to reboot your entire personality. Let me tell you something. Probably the word of rebooting is kind of um, uh, impressive uh, and too, too extensive to, 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 to take into account so in, in order to, 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 to deal with this situation of of uh, liberating yourself or delivering yourself from uh, from these uh, bondages that, that came on, uh, uh, upon you from the past, that you were not able to, to discern between what was good and what was evil. Let me, let me tell you something. Rebooting yourself is completely possible. Lord Jesus said, ask uh, this, uh, this rich young man who became interested in following him, Jesus said to the man, take your riches and sell them and follow me. Those kinds of riches that Jesus spoke about are the kinds of riches that are completely unuseful for your spiritual growth. So, Pastor Subject, Bly Subject, is speaking about these situations. Let us hear. Miscarriage. Fourth one is divorce, fifth one is constant financial lack, and sixth one repeated accidents and premature deaths, or uh, when people do not die at the right time. I understand that looking at this, you may say some of these troubles disciples of Jesus faced, like, you know, financial lack, and some people experienced a certain attacks, they died early. We have to understand, the Lord doesn't promise to deliver us from persecution. Jesus and the apostles died because they were persecuted for their faith. The Lord doesn't promise us to deliver us from that. He promises to be with us in that, and occasionally He does deliver. God promises us to deliver us from the devils, from demons, from curses, and many of these things are caused by nothing short but the devil. Amen? Today we're going to focus specifically on the issue of addiction, on the issue of bondage. In the gospel, in, in the Bible, there is a verse in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. It says this, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage. Somebody say spirit of bondage. You did not receive the spirit of bondage. Bondage is an addiction. I want you to see here that Jesus is revealing through the writer of the book of Romans that there is a demon behind addictions. Repeated unbroken habits many times have a spirit behind them. And if you've ever been addicted to something, you can testify to the reality of the fact that you don't want that. 
You're fighting that. You're putting all kinds of guardrails against that, and that keeps slipping you and pushing you back in. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not because even you lack willpower. Many times, listen to me very carefully. Bible says many times it's because we received spirit of bondage. And Paul is trying to say that God didn't give us that. That came from someone else. Some other spirit gave that, and it's the devil's spirit. I've read a list of addictions. You know, 40 million of people in the United States are addicted to smoking. 4.2 million are addicted to marijuana. 18 million are addicted to alcohol. 1.8 million are addicted to painkillers. 821,000 are addicted to cocaine. 426,000 are addicted to heroin. Thousands are addicted to gambling, sex, internet, shopping. And that could be an addiction. Video games is a huge one. Plastic surgery. When people are addicted to uh, gluttony, when they constantly eat, small little trouble, and they go into eating. And that could become an addiction. Uh, chewing ice, eating rocks, eating nails, eating coins, eating chalk, eating clay, eating feces, ashes, dirt, toilet, and paper. These are now actually have names for these dysfunctions when people are addicted to. And, of course, addiction to pornography or addicted to um, watching explicit material. And these are addictions. Many times behind these addictions are demonic spirits that hold people captive and hold people in bondage. Today, through this message, I want to help people who are in addiction. Myself experiencing certain of them and uh, seeing God's grace in helping me to overcome and having a church where we see people who've been free I want to share just a few simple thoughts that will help you to get strengthened to receive freedom from God. And then we're going to pray against the spiritual forces behind addictions. And we're going to pray for the viewers who are watching us who have those addictions in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? If you have your notes, I want you to write down point number one. Stop dating Delilah. Stop dating Delilah. Now, Delilah, I don't mean uh, that... You, that particular girl, Delilah speaks of a woman in Samson's life that Samson asked, listen to this, he asked her to bind him. Delilah represents people in your life you like, but you know you shouldn't be with. They trigger the sin in your life. It's the circles in your life that if you go, you feel so relaxed, your guard is down, and then they bring the alcohol, and you know that for you, that is a struggle. So you put yourself in a way where Delilah, something you like, but it's not something you should be around, and then she binds you with ropes, but because you tell yourself, I can break them, you keep breaking them, breaking them, but there will be a day when Delilah will bind you with a rope, you will not be able to break. The Bible says, he got up and said, I will lose myself as before, but the Lord left him. God's protection is on your life, but that protection begins to lift when you step into the house of Delilah. When you step and you lay your head on the lap of Delilah, many people will experience deliverance if they will only delete the numbers of people who are selling them drugs and inviting them to a places where they get buzzed. It's very spiritual. Just delete it. Just leave it alone. Because Delilah, she will put you on her lap. You will lose all kinds of discipline, and then she will bind you. And that bondage is not the devil's fault. And the bondage is that you gave her your hands to bind you with. And you can cry there until you lose your voice for God to deliver you. But God can only deliver you from your enemies, not from your friends. When you make Delilah your friend, if you make her someone you flirt with, someone you play with, someone that you like, next thing that happens, you cannot have the audacity to ask God to deliver you from something you feed every single day. You have to hate it. You have to struggle with it. You have to fight it. You have to want to be free from that. Can somebody say amen? When Jesus spoke against the devil in the wilderness, and he rebuked him, Jesus was in the wilderness, speaks of separation. And Jesus was fasting, speaks of discipline. And then he said, devil, get behind me. See, my power against the devil is congruent or consistent with how much separation do I have from the house of Delilah. 
And how much discipline am I applying to my spiritual life? See, if my life is not disciplined, if every single junk is on my phone, all kinds of music, all kinds of movies, and all kinds of stuff, material, things that are constantly poisoning my soul, and I'm putting myself in the way where there is bad people, or people that are just, I shouldn't be with, they're constantly tempting me to my old life, and then I get up and say, I rebuke you, Satan. Satan's going to laugh. That's exactly what Delilah did. Delilah will laugh at you. And the Satan is not going to be bound. Satan is going to bind you. When Jesus spoke against the devil, it's because he was fasting and he was in the wilderness. When Samson got up to fight the Philistines, it's because he was napping on her, on her lap and he was in the wrong house. That's why the Bible says, I'm going to go and fight them. See, he believed in charismatic deliverance. I'm going to go because I've done it before. And everything gets lost. He gets up and the Bible says he didn't know the Lord was not with him. It's not the form of rebuking the devil that empowers you. It's a lifestyle of discipline and separation from the world. If every time you go to the mall and Victoria, who has no secrets, glares your eyes and draws you in and you're staring, every single junk that is on your phone, all kinds of immoral things are there, and you constantly put yourself in a way, it may be your co-workers who constantly drink and tempt you, sell you drugs, and next thing that happens, you, I rebuke the spirit of drinking, I rebuke the spirit of alcohol, I rebuke that. See, you can't rebuke that if you are in Delilah's house napping on her lap. Can somebody say amen? You can only rebuke that if, if you get out of the Delilah's house and if you disconnect yourself, remove the, her address from your GPS and begin to focus on God. Then you say, I rebuke you, Satan. And the Bible says he left. Submit yourself to God and then resist the devil. Knowing that the devil exists and knowing that behind your addiction is the devil, that doesn't give you power. It's submitting yourself to God. Separating yourself from the things that tempt you gives you the power to overcome against the devil. Can somebody say amen? And it's important to remove not only the, 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 the bad addictions, but remove ourselves from the things that are, that are naive, but that are dangerous. That are dangerous. The, I call them pet sins. That make you into a prisoner of those sins. The pet sins are the things that when, when somebody offended you and you, you, you harbored that offense, okay, for one week it's fine. But second week you keep holding on to that. That thing eventually turns into rage. And ask Cain. That's how the first murder was born. God comes to Cain and he says, you're entertaining. You are feeding on the lap of offense. And he says, the sin is crouching at the door. He says, but you have dominion over it. And he says, throw it away when it's still small. Because once it gets inside, it becomes a spirit of murder. Deal with sins when they are still crouching. Do not deal with sins when they're already crouching and they're already bound you. Deal when they are pet sins. And then you'll overcome them. Amen. Like even, you know, in, in my own life, uh, last year, I started to notice, you know, the Lord delivered me from, from the spirit of, of pornography. I really believe it was the demon that was tormenting my life. But that what, what I started to realize is that when I start slacking, and when I don't live a life separated to God, just because I'm a preacher, I'm not protected. Just because that I have a beautiful wife, that doesn't mean the devil would just say, well, since you got married, I'm going to leave you alone. He doesn't give a care whether I'm married, how many people it's going to destroy. Actually, he likes the fact that when my influence is growing, to torment me and hit me because it could affect more people. And I remember... Uh, thank you for watching uh, this extract um, that is from Hungry Generation with Pastor Blas Shevchuk and the address of this video is at uh, youtube.com. Watch the... Uh, uh, Interrogation V equal H L E five L P C T F sixty. Oh, you can follow the, the the address of this video, which is extensive, but I am including just very very important to track and we are going to comment comment briefly right behind this. Well, I'm going to finish this uh, extract uh, with an invitation that uh, if you want really to conquer your own dark areas, your, your own dark situations, you have to start with doing small but decisive changes. Usually, the situation that we all have lived through Something like this. First, uh, a person invites you uh, to 
uh, his or her surroundings uh, and in these surroundings is full with uh, or filled with sin protagonists that I call sin protagonists. People that are showing uh, sinful ways that or are engaging in sinful, in sinful behavior. Second, you be, be, begin to share with this sin protagonism and suddenly you become another protagonist of sin. You become a sinner. Third, sin makes a bondage on yourself. These three steps are really, really fast sometimes and some other times they take a long time to appear to change one step, one condition with the other until you are binded, you are under bondage with sin. After you are you are you have become a sinner, sin stains yourself. Sin doesn't last much to stain yourself, to stain your soul. Because Sin knows that somehow this sin system knows, is aware that you are one day going to be jaded with, with sin itself and you are going to reject itself. Uh, the, the sinful situation, the sinful energy is trying to, 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 to make you stain uh, so that after you are changing your behavior, you are going to remember the episodes. You are going to remember the times when you were sinning, when you were thinking, or you did something very, very bad. Now, after these unavoidable uh, situations that are uh, accompanying sin, sinful activities, first you are invited, second you are sharing, third you are uh, under bondage, and fourth you are if you are aware that you are doing wrong with yourself or with others that you love around you, and then you are bold enough to, to reject all bondages, allegiances, and friendships with sin, you have to do this, but inside yourself. That's what uh, Pastor Sertuk, Pastor Black, is saying, that sin is inside yourself. Probably others invited you to share their environment, but you accepted this thing because you ca you could have gone away from that situation, from that situation. So that you have to start to struggle inside yourself. The next step is that you can save others. You can save others that are sinning with you. But despite this, you can share your own example of deliverance. The Lord does not do this on purpose, does not allow you to sin in order to be an example of deliverance before others. This is not the way the Lord manifests His glory in your life. But everything is in, in the situation that you are dialoguing with the Lord and you are presenting your mistakes before Him and you are allowing him to teach you how to wash away the stains that sin has left inside yourself. And the next step is that you have to develop discipline at two fundamental areas. This is uh, a, a personal opinion that I share with Pastor Kevsik, uh, is that you have to pray and fast. I don't know in which order. Because I would like if I tell you, well, you have to pray first, and then you have to fast first, and you have to fast first, and then you are going to, to be awake uh, to prayer. I don't know how this appears in every, in every person. The steps are simple, praying, praying and fasting. And you can fast, fast is something very powerful. You can fast at almost anything bad, from excessive flesh pleasures, like sleeping a lot, like Waking up late, like eating a lot, like eating in, the, in a disorderly manner. To many situations like staying late at night and on the internet, and many things like using a specific kind of language 
that describes you as a civil-minded person before others. That means that your language is something very important in order to recover the stability of your life and the dominion on yourself. So we are going to speak abundantly about this in this ministry for all time to come, for all time that we are allowed to do by the Lord. And this is very, very important. That sin is accompanying when uh, the, the, the situation where you accept a friend, someone who is sinful, someone who is sin. So your only friend, if you are already a Christian, your only friend should be the Holy Spirit. And before all else, you have to keep uh, an attitude of respect and, and um, understanding that you, you should not go back again to the same sharing the occasion of sinning. You, you are a Christian, just don't go to, to, to dangerous places where people are deliberately sinning, committing crimes or selling drugs or... or or trafficking people, for example, these these things are really, really dark and they will stain you a lot. So stay away in the name of Lord Jesus and, and insist in prayer and fasting and do it according to your own need and you are going to grow along with this and then after that when you are understanding that the, the, the wonders of Prayer and the wonders of fasting, you are going to practice this accordingly to the, the commands of the Lord and, and the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you will be happy and you will understand why are you called to pray and fast. Amen. In the name of Jesus, see you.